Hey guys, I'm Cody with PCF and today we're we'll going over how to use drills and some of the different bits that you can use with the drills. Zolan's gonna come out, he's gonna be demonstrating how to do all this stuff and going over everything. So anything you guys see in this video, any drills or drill bits, there'll be links below so you can pick those up. If you do buy from the link, we do get a small commission. It helps run this channel, uh, but we do appreciate it. Hey guys, Zolan here with PCF. Today we're gonna be going over drills, how to use them, everything about drills. First up is the anatomy of a drill. So let's talk about the parts, what makes a drill work, uh, kind of just all the ins and outs. First off, you've got the handle. It's probably the most obvious part of the drill. Uh, you have the trigger, that's what actuates it. Um, right here, you'll see one button on either side. It's actually a slider that goes through the drill. That controls forward or reverse. Generally, they're gonna have an arrow on here. So this side shows an arrow pointing this way, so that's your reverse. So if we push that all the way in, it's going to spin in reverse. And if we push it in from the other side, it will go forward. Most of them will also have a intermediate position in the middle, and that's your lock. Uh, that's handy for putting it in a toolbox or something if you still have the battery on. Another thing up here on the top, uh, this particular drill has two different speeds. So you'll see we've got a one on that setting and a two on this setting. So it's got a little gearbox in there. So on one, that's gonna be your lower speed, high torque mode. So you can see that's full throttle and it's not spinning that fast. Then we go to two, we get much higher speed, but um, if you're using a larger drill bit, you're more likely to cause it to torque out. And we'll go over that in just a little bit. Um, next up, this drill has this rotating collar right here. Um, so it's got a series of numbers on it from one all the way up to 15. And then at the end, it's got a little picture of a drill bit. And you have a little arrow right on top that points to any one of these numbers. This is really nice for driving in screws where if it's a really small fastener, um, something that you're afraid you're gonna snap, or if you don't wanna drive it too deep, you can set the torque on this and it will stop spinning. It'll start to slip at a preset torque amount. So I might be able to demonstrate, yeah. So if I have it on one of the low torque settings and I grip it so it can't move, you'll see it, it makes that noise and basically it stops spinning. So that's, that's a nice feature. Um, and then the drill, if you go all the way to the top to the drill icon, then it's full torque. There's no slipping going on. All right, next part is the chuck. So this is kind of your standard three jaw chuck. Um, you've got your adjustment collar right here. So as you spin, spin it this way, your chuck is going to extend and tighten to hold your drill bit. As you spin this way, it will loosen and open up. A lot of guys will just hold it and hit the trigger. That's kind of the faster way to adjust it. Most manufacturers though will recommend that you tighten it by hand. Uh, and a lot of them these days have some sort of ratcheting mechanism um, to really help you get some torque on there. This particular drill has a little light. Most drills these days have some sort of light down here at the bottom or around the head to help light up your workspace. And this one has a switch down at the bottom that um, it just has three different light modes. And then you've got your battery. Uh, that's pretty standard. We're not really gonna talk about that much. And you've got a hook. That's really nice for being able to clip it onto a pocket. Um, if you're going up and down a ladder, just a nice handy way to carry it. So I think that's about it for our anatomy. Um, let's get into safety. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about safety. I know this might seem like, uh, you know, not the easiest tool in the world to hurt yourself with, but there's definitely some things that you can overlook, ways that you can hurt yourself. So number one, the most obvious thing, you've got a spinning sharp piece of metal out there, keep it away from body parts. Also, just think about what you're drilling through. Um, make sure you're not holding, you know, underneath your workpiece and about to drill right into your hand, something like that. Or, you know, not, not necessarily safety, but you might drill into another piece that you didn't want to drill into. So just be aware of that. Uh, one of the more important aspects of safety with a drill is when you're using large bits like this Forstner bit, um, 
you would be surprised how much torque these drills can put out, especially in their lower speed modes. If, it, if that drill bit binds up, the drill can whip around and hit you, or I mean, I've almost had it hurt my wrist before, you know, just twisting my wrist in a weird way. But one of the most important things is a big bit like this or a large hole saw bit, um, it can grab gloves, it can grab loose clothing. Um, a lot of guys have really hurt their hands by having a glove go into the bit or even get stuck in like the chuck and twist your finger up into it. So definitely watch out for that. Loose hair, that would be, you know, if you have long hair, it could get sucked up into your face. Um, something that's happened to a lot of our guys, um, if you're holding a workpiece and you're pushing really hard on a drill bit, what can happen, you go to start and it slips off and you can just stab yourself right in the finger. Definitely watch out for that. Another thing, um, if you are wearing gloves, it's very tempting to, to hold the fastener on while you get it started like that. Um, sometimes that'll work out for you if your gloves are kind of dry, but if they're tacky at all, your glove will get wrapped up into that fastener and you know you can break a finger, tear your finger up. So just be aware that you know that that bit and the, the screw itself are spinning and can suck your, your glove in and really hurt. Another thing you want to think about with regards to safety is drill bits get extremely hot, especially if you're drilling a hole that takes longer than just a second or two. Uh, so just be aware of that. I've burned myself numerous times by having a drill bit go in to change it and these things get screaming hot. So if you're drilling multiple holes, be aware your bits are going to be hot. So those are the main things with safety. Also eye ear protection, that's just smart thing to use anytime you're using any power tool. Drill bits are very highly hardened steel. They have a tendency to fracture. So if one of them breaks, it can definitely send shards of metal at your face. So protect those eyes. Uh, that's pretty much it for safety. Next up is gonna be some demonstrations of common bits and how to use them. Okay, so we're gonna get into some demonstration here. Uh, so we're gonna start small and go large. First bit, just a small little eighth inch twist bit. So this is going to be something that we use a lot for pre-drilling screws. Uh, this is especially important with like deck boards or anything that is gonna have a nice finish to it. I'm just using a piece of pressure treated uh, wood here to, to demonstrate, but uh, this is something we use on finish, finish work generally. Um, the, the main reason you're gonna do this, if you were just to run a screw in to a deck board or any other finished material, it has a tendency to cause like a volcano effect. The surface of it kind of puckers up and, and just doesn't look very nice. So in order to pre-drill something, um, we're gonna screw these two pieces together. So I'm just gonna start with my drill right up against the workpiece. You can start it and then run it into the workpiece, really doesn't matter, um, especially on something like this. We're not gonna push really hard. Uh, we're, we're kinda gonna let the drill do, the, do its work for us. Um, one of the most important things with smaller drill bits like this is they are very hard steel. They do not tolerate bending forces very well. So make sure you're just going straight in and not bending it, especially once you get into the wood. So we're just going to pre-drill our hole all the way down. We're gonna use our impact driver to run the screw in. And there we go. So again, with pressure treated, we could have done that without the pre-drill, but on different materials, it's very important to, to pre-drill. So the next drill bit we're gonna to go to is a step bit. So this is generally something that you're not going to use on wood. Um, I'm really just gonna let you see it. Just, it, it's kind of a, a cool, unique bit. Um, but this bit starts out at about 3 16 and then it works up in steps and gets to a larger and larger diameter. So this is really nice for drilling or widening holes in uh, sheet metal, like aluminum or steel, like something kind of like what these saw horses are made out of. If we wanted to uh, widen a hole in this sheet metal or you know make a new hole it's it's a really good tool so I'll, I'll drill a little hole in this plywood but it's really not the best tool for the job for this so you can see as we go down the hole gets larger and larger we can keep going and we can just stop at whichever 
uh, measurement that we want to. It's got the measurements written on the side of the bit. All right, next we're gonna step up to this long, I believe this is a 5 8 twist bit. Um, so this bit is what you call a self-feed bit. You can tell that by the fact that it has a, a screw on the tip of it. So what that does is it's going to bite into your wood and pull itself in. So this is definitely a case where you don't have to do much pushing. Once it gets started, it's gonna pull itself through the workpiece. So we're gonna drill a piece right here. We're actually gonna go all the way through, through the plywood and all. So this is one of these drill bits that you really wanna be careful. Um, the drill is gonna be putting a lot of torque into this. So there's a good chance that the drill could spin around and hit you. So you wanna make sure you have a, a firm grasp on it. But be aware of that if this bit binds up in the workpiece, it can definitely spin around and start hitting you. All right, so what happened right there is our drill torqued out. So a lot of these drills have a maximum torque capability. And once it hits that, it's going to stop. So if I try to go again, you see it just kicks back and stops. So what that means we need to do is we're gonna have to switch to our higher torque setting. So I'm gonna switch it to one, that's our lower speed but higher torque. So now this is when you really wanna have a firm grasp on this drill because it has a lot of torque in that number one setting. So we're gonna go a little slower and complete our hole. And there, there we go. And now just to clean the hole out, I'm gonna let it spin and kind of move the bit up and down a little bit. I'm gonna go back to our higher speed setting. And there we go, we have a nice clean hole all the way through. Next drill bit is a Forstner bit. So these bits are excellent for drilling larger holes. Um, you kind of have two options. You've got hole saw and Forstner bits. Uh, both of them work really well, but the Forstner bit would be my choice for drilling through a thicker piece of wood, like a piece of pressure treated two by lumber. If I were just drilling through uh, plywood, like say an electrician drilling a nice hole for a box, uh, an electrical box, that's where this comes in handy. Um, personally, I like the Forstner bits for most stuff like this. So we're going to put this in the drill. So with this Forstner bit, um, it does require a little bit more pressure. I find that pretty high pressure um, helps, it, helps it bite and drill the hole a lot faster. Uh, so we, we have a little point right there in the center that locates the bit, kind of holds it until you get the, the hole started. So we're gonna start out slow, get our hole started, and then we can apply more pressure and let it eat its way through. All right, so here we go. So now that I've got that hole started, um, now we're gonna apply a little bit more pressure. And you can see I've got the same problem. It's starting to torque out because I'm back on my high speed mode. I could go to the, the higher torque mode, but I think what I'm gonna do is just use a little bit less pressure. Either one works. I would rather stick in the high speed mode and not have to worry about the drill hitting me. And there we go. So the Forstner bit creates a really clean hole and we also have a reasonably clean hole, not from this guy, you can see that's pretty messed up. The Forstner bit made a pretty clean hole because we had a backer behind it. And that's something that's really important with most drill bits. Um, if you're trying to drill a hole through something and you have your workpiece hanging over the edge and there's nothing behind it, um, what you're gonna end up with generally is the back side of the wood blowing out and it's gonna be really unsightly. Doesn't always matter, but if it does matter, make sure to back your work piece up with another piece of wood and that'll ensure that you have a nice clean exit. On to our final piece or our final drill bit. That would be the hole saw. So hole saws are nice uh, because they come in really large sizes. Um, you can get these for wood, for tile, metal, Really, they make them to drill holes in almost anything. The Forstner bit is great for, you know, one inch up to maybe two and a half, three inches. But if you've got to go bigger than that, like this one is a three inch, the hole saw is really what you want to use. Um, it's nice because you have a pilot bit 
this guy, and then you have your actual hole saw. These are interchangeable, so you can just buy one pilot bit, and then you can buy multiple hole saws. So the pilot bit, what is this for? So this will go into the wood first, and that will actually hold the bit in place. Um, if one, one place that you would not want to use this is, let's say we wanted to enlarge this hole. A hole saw might work, but it's going to be really tough because your center is already drilled out. Your pilot bit doesn't have anything to grab into. Um, so just be aware that hole saw is not going to be ideal for that. It's generally for starting a new hole. All right. And we're going to use our hole saw right here. I'm going to start in our high speed mode, but we'll probably have to go to the high torque mode. And so there we go. We've started the hole. Once our hole saw has bit into the wood, then the pilot bit is no longer doing much for us. All right, so we're have, starting to torque out if we put any real pressure on it. So I'm gonna go to the high torque mode and I'm just gonna make sure that I really have a firm grasp on this thing. Another trick that I've learned um, is, see when we're in forward, the drill wants to kick this direction. So what I will do a lot of times is set it on this side of my body and have it bump up against my thigh. That way I can kind of get a better control over the, the drill. All right, so there we go. We've got our plug of wood inside of here. Um, most hole saws will have little slots on the side so you can use a screwdriver or whatever to pop the, that plug out of there. And there you go, a nice three inch hole. Okay, so uh, last demonstration item. Um, up until this point, I've been using the impact driver to drive in all my screws. I generally do that in the field because these are kind of suited perfectly for driving screws and they're really fast. Um, but there are certain times when a drill is the better tool for driving in a screw. So like we talked about in the beginning, when we were talking about the torque limiting feature, um, this torque limiting feature on a drill has a lot more settings and you have less chance of breaking a fastener when using the drill rather than the impact, since the impact is, it's essentially hammering that screw multiple times per second. The drill doesn't do that, it's just a single rotational force. Um, so a lot of times, if you're using small fasteners or like a, you know, an aluminum fastener or something that's likely to twist or break, the drill is actually the better tool for driving that fastener. So just like with drill bits, you can put a driver bit in here. So this is a Torx T20. Um, so just to demonstrate, we can use it to drive in our screws just as easily as we can with the, the driver. So it works just fine. Right now I'm gonna set my torque feature pretty high so it'll just drive it in and that was on the high torque mode let's go to the high speed mode so as you can see it drives it in just as well as the driver and I think that will just about do it for most common types of drill bits of course there's many more out there there's bits for drilling glass tile stone masonry all kinds of stuff uh, but those are kind of your ma main types of, of drill bits all right, so let's talk about recommendations. Um, I have DeWalt. I really like DeWalt. I'm happy with them. Um, the, the reason I settled on DeWalt is it was just what somebody else had. It's what my dad always had. So I, I feel like DeWalt, Makita, and Milwaukee all make really good, really good tools. Uh, there's plenty of other brands out there. Um, some of the less expensive ones like Ryobi, Cobalt, um, Rigid also make great tools. If you're working out in the field and doing this professionally, I would stick to DeWalt, Makita, or Milwaukee. Um, which one to choose really is up to you. I, I would say it depends on which one has the tools that you want, um, but I can highly recommend DeWalt. Um, probably the better thing to do here for recommendations is, is to talk about some certain features that you might want in a drill and let that kind of guide you. Um, so some of the features about this particular drill that I really appreciate, um, it's got the ratcheting chuck on it, which allows you to get a, a tighter bit fit. So when you're putting in a smooth shank bit like this, uh, you'll notice some of them have hexagonal shape to them, 
which means you don't have to torque that bit nearly as tight. But if you've got a round shank like this one, you actually do have to get a fair amount of torque so that it doesn't slip in the drill. So having that ratcheting head really makes a big difference. It allows you to tighten it down much, much tighter. Multiple speeds, I would say don't buy a drill that doesn't have multiple speeds. Um, as you saw in today's demonstration, there were certain times when I absolutely had to have that higher torque setting. Um, also the torque limiting feature, it's something I don't use all that often, but when I do use it, um, it's great. For instance, doing Trek, hidden fastener, deck screws, uh, their warranty actually requires that we use a drill, not a driver. And I set it to number seven and just send them and they, it, it works out perfectly. I would probably stick to the 20 volt tools as opposed to the 12 volt tools. They're, they've got a lot more torque. And as with any battery powered tool, um, the key to being successful, especially if you're doing this professionally, is having lots of batteries and the larger batteries definitely work better. Got more capacity, they'll keep you running longer and they seem to actually have more power. All right, so that's it for recommendations. Thanks for watching and Cody's gonna send us off. Hey guys, so that's the video, how to use drills, how to use some of the accessories. We have done a poll with our carpenters to see kind of what drills and brands they use. Some of that information might be helpful if you're looking to purchase some drills, so definitely check that out. Um, and also, you can find all this stuff below in the links. And if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do so. It helps us keep this channel going, and we appreciate it. Thank you, guys.